Okay, let's have a little break now. I'll be showing you an emoji, and your task is to find the one that doesn't belong to the group. Ready? Here's the first one. What do you say? I'd say that this one doesn't belong here. All the others are blue. Okay, here's another set for you. Will you manage to find the one that doesn't belong here? All of them except for this one are sports equipment. Any ideas here? Yes, they're all summer related, but this one doesn't really fit in. And the last set for you. Will you manage to find the odd one? These are all real everyday objects, but this one is magical. So, it's the odd one out. Belle and Chloe are twins. One year, Belle had her birthday on Friday. Oh, yes. Chloe celebrated her birthday two days later on Sunday. The guests who came to both parties didn't believe that twins could have birthdays two days apart, but the girls showed their IDs and explained everything. So, how is it possible? The twins were born at night. Belle was born right before midnight on February 28th, and Chloe was born right after midnight on March 1st. This year was a leap year, and February 29th came in between these dates. Inoni lives on a farm where she has horses, rabbits, and chickens. Here's what she says about her horses. All of my horses except for two are black. Also, all of them except for two are brown. And all of them except for two are white. How many horses does Inoni have? And what color are they? She has just three horses, one black, one brown, and one white. There was a diversity week at school, and one of the students was robbed. <laughs> Detective Callum interrogated three main suspects. Eliza said she'd been working in the cafeteria the whole time. Oh. Asher pointed at one of the flags and said he'd been fixing it since it had been hanging upside down. Hmm. Naya said that the student who had been robbed was her best friend, so she never would have done that. Who's guilty? Asher, the flag that was supposed to be hanging upside down is actually symmetrical. On a rainy day in the summer, a house in a small neighborhood was robbed while the owners were away. The police came to interrogate four neighbors. Everyone said that it had been raining. They'd been at home all day, eating and watching movies. Take a look at the houses. Who is lying? Reed is lying. Look, the ground under his car is wet which means he arrived after it had started raining. So he did leave his house. Miss Virginia Dell was a rich gentleman's daughter. She was staying at her hotel room when a security guard called her. He told her to run away since the criminal was going up to her room. What? Miss Dell ran to the elevators, but in each of them, there was a man. Which elevator is safe for her to use? The criminal obviously came from the first floor, and since this man is going down, it must be safe to go with him. Really? Dakota woke up in a dungeon. She couldn't remember what had happened. After wandering around for a while, she found out it was a vampire's castle guarded by the creature himself. Huh. Also, she found three chests. One of them was full of gold coins. Another was filled with silver coins. And the third chest was full of diamonds. Dakota could take any chest with her, but she wouldn't be able to get past the vampire anyways. What should the girl do? Dakota should take the chest with silver coins. Vampires are afraid of silver, so she'll be able to walk past him. Amelia is participating in a game show. 
And here is her last task. If she completes it, she'll win. She has cubes with these numbers. She should use three of them so that the sum total is equal to 30. Which ones should Amelia use? She should turn the cube with 9 over to get 6, and then use it along with 11 and 13. Sienna must leave the house in exactly 9 minutes. The power is off and her cell phone battery is flat. Sienna has two hourglasses. One measures 7 minutes and the other measures 4 minutes. How can she use them to measure exactly 9 minutes? Sienna should start both hourglasses at the same time. When the 4-minute hourglass runs out, she should start it again. 4 minutes will pass. When the 7 minutes hourglass runs out a bit later, she should start it again. It'll be 7 minutes. The 4-minute hourglass will run for one more minute together with the 7-minute one. When it runs out of sand, it'll be 8 minutes. Sienna should then flip over the 7-minute hourglass. It'll have sand in its top part for exactly one minute. Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things, but at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno. Gabriella was reading. Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. 
a young actress, Chanel, was staying there. She said some man, dressed in black and wearing a mask, broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first. Then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom, but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, "Eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, all I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, it must be Wednesday or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt. Maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. 
Page said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Page to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. Each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl. Her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement. And Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out, thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm. Chris and William are getting ready for the day. Which of them doesn't live alone? William is brushing his teeth, but there is one more toothbrush in the bathroom. It's likely to belong to someone else. So I'd say William doesn't live alone. Now, take a look at these pictures of Philip and Kai. One of them lives with his girlfriend. Can you tell who it is? There's a pair of high heels and a dress in Philip's wardrobe. He probably has a girlfriend. Look at Luna and Evadine's rooms. One of the girls has a sister who she shares the room with. Can you tell who has a sister? There's a bunk bed in Luna's room. I bet she has a sibling. Okay, one of these guys has a cat. Can you tell who it is? It's the guy on the right. Look! The wallpaper at the bottom of the wall is scratched. Now, I'll be showing you some pictures one by one. Your task is to find what's wrong with them. Ready? Here's the first one.
The sun is shining, but the camels don't cast shadows. Here's the next one. What's really off here? Look at the flag at the top of the building and at the tree nearby. It seems that the wind is blowing in different directions. This is impossible. This one is pretty simple. What will you say? The reflection in the mirror is wrong. Pay attention to the smallest details. What's wrong here? The school bus doesn't have a door. Something's off with this image. What is it? Look at the clock! In the winter, no sunset can happen at this hour. Esme was walking in the forest. She got lost but found the witch's house. She walked in to ask for her help. The witch and the cat had a guest. The witch's grandson came to visit. The grandson had heard of Esme and of her ability to solve riddles. So, he had a riddle for her too. He took a t-shirt and cut two holes in it. The question was, how many holes does the t-shirt have now? Eight. With two holes cut through, there are two on each side, four in total. Plus, there are two holes for the arms, one for the head, and one at the bottom. Every weekday, Kennedy eats an apple on her way to work. Once, she noticed a woman selling flowers. The woman gave a man a bouquet and said, tuna sandwich. The next day, it was yogurt, directed at another person. On the third day, it was eggs. Kennedy got curious and walked up to the woman to get some flowers. The woman said, apple. What was her weird ability? The woman always knew the last thing her client ate. Simon had a crush on a new girl in his class. Finally, he asked her out on a date. To impress her, he told the girl he had undergone a special secret training program. And then he visited the moon. He even had a picture. The girl took a look at it but didn't believe Simon. Why? In the picture, Simon is standing on the moon. Still, there's another moon in the background, which is impossible. He might have cool Photoshop skills, but he definitely hadn't thought it through. One rich and well-known elderly woman, Mrs. Stevenson, had been living alone for years. She had one interesting quirk. Every time someone rang the doorbell, she wouldn't open the door without putting on her coat and hat first. Can you guess why? She didn't know who the visitor was until she opened the door. If she liked that person, she'd tell them she'd just returned home and invite them to come in. If it was someone she didn't want to spend time with, she said she was leaving. Mrs. Jordan loved music. So she sent her daughter, Gianna, to music school. The woman made the girl play every day. Once, Mrs. Jordan had to go on a business trip for two weeks. She asked Gianna to practice every day, and the girl agreed. When Mrs. Jordan came back two weeks later, she realized Gianna hadn't been practicing. How did she understand it? The piano is dusty, which means it's been a while since Gianna last opened it. A group of aliens from another galaxy discovered planet Earth and decided to study people. Four of them turned into humans and went to our planet to explore. But the aliens didn't really succeed in pretending to be humans. Take a look at these photos and try to find an alien. Here's the first image. Can you spot anything strange? This guy's skin is blue. He must be the alien. This one's harder. Do you see a fake human here?
It's winter and it's cold, but this guy is only wearing shorts. That's some non-human ability to tolerate cold temperatures. What about this one? Take a closer look at what this guy is eating. It doesn't look like human food at all. Okay, what do you say here? Did you notice this one has six fingers? I bet it's him. Mrs. Lawrence has three daughters who she doesn't allow to go outside after 8 p.m. The woman was at work when a neighbor called her and said she'd seen one of her daughters in the mall. Mrs. Lawrence immediately called each of her girls. Mia said she'd been playing badminton outside. Nicole said she had an online study session with her friends. Quinn said she'd been playing computer games. Who lied? Mia. She couldn't play badminton alone, and since her sisters were all busy, they couldn't play with her. I have a friend, Anna. Her mom is the most unusual person I know. She has green hair, wears skirts with trousers, and has a pet raccoon. She also has three daughters. Her oldest daughter's name is Wednesday. Her middle daughter's name is Thursday. Can you guess what her youngest daughter's name is? Well, it's Anna's mom, so her third daughter's name is Anna. On the first day of college, Ruby went missing. A detective had three suspects, Mrs. Collins, the director, Mr. Wright, the cleaning man, and Cassidy, Ruby's best friend. Mrs. Collins said that she had to do her midterm report and hadn't left her office. Mr. Wright said he hadn't even seen the girl. Cassidy said they'd spent the whole day together at college. But then Ruby went home. Who is lying? It must be the director, Mrs. Collins. It was the first day of college. There couldn't possibly be any midterm reports yet. Della and Aurora always tell the truth, but on their birthdays, they always lie. Today is September 3rd, and their friend Mark asks them when their birthdays are. Della says it was yesterday. Aurora says it's tomorrow. The next day, the guy asks the same question, but their answers don't change. When are the girls' birthdays? Each of them lied on one of the days, so these two days must be their birthdays. Della said it was yesterday both times so her birthday must be on September 3rd. Then, the next day, she told the truth. September 4th is Aurora's birthday. She told the truth on the first day and then lied on her birthday. Hazley and Skylar are jaywalking. Hazley is listening to music and Skylar is texting. Who is in danger? It's Skylar. She's jaywalking right where the road takes a turn. There's a car approaching her, and the driver might not have enough time to react. Serafina and Flora wanted to go to a party, but their parents had grounded them. Serafina decided to leave through the back door, and Flora wanted to sneak out through her bedroom window. Who will not make it to the party? Probably Flora. Her father is sitting next to her window, reading a book. He'll probably see her leaving. Brooke and Sydney were going to learn how to swim. Brooke went to the lake near her house, and Sydney went to the ocean with her friends. Who is in greater danger? Brooke, she went alone. There was no one around to save her in case something goes wrong. Brielle got a new bike as a present for her birthday. It was a surprise, so she locked it in the room and left for work. When she returned, the bike wasn't there. She realized someone in her family must have pulled a prank. Her brother said he hadn't seen anything. Her dad said he'd noticed a bike while walking past her room, but she was in a hurry to get to work. Her mom said she'd spent the day downstairs making a cake. 
Who pulled the prank? It must be Brielle's dad. She locked the room so he couldn't see the bike unless he walked in. In a magical world, there are two cities connected by a bridge. The city on the left bank of the river is guarded. No one can enter or leave it without written permission. Ellie was held captive in this city. She managed to escape and needed to get to the other side. It took 10 minutes to cross the bridge, but the guard came out of his house every 5 minutes. How can Ellie cross the bridge? Ellie should leave the city when the guard goes back to his house. Five minutes later, she should turn around and walk back towards the guard. When she approaches the man, he'll think she's trying to come in. But since Ellie won't have any permission, he'll send her back to the city on the right bank of the river. It was a lazy Sunday morning, and John was having breakfast in the kitchen. Suddenly, he heard glass shattering. He walked into the living room and saw that someone had just broken one of his windows. He was mad and decided to go outside to see if he could find the culprit. There were only three people in the street, so he talked to each of them. The first was one of his neighbor's children. He was coming back from his football practice, holding a ball in his hands. He said he'd been going home at the time of the incident. The second person was Stephen, John's neighbor and longtime friend. He was carrying a toolbox. The man said he decided to come home to fix John's window. The last person was Julio, a mailman. He was riding his bike, throwing newspapers on people's front lawns. He said it had been hours since he'd passed John's house. Soon enough, John figured out who had done it. How? It was the mailman. If you look at the lawn, the newspaper is lying on the grass beneath the window. He threw the newspaper towards the mailbox but missed it, and it hit John's window. Whoops. It was a stormy night. Kate and her boyfriend stayed up late watching a soap opera. In the middle of it, there was a weather forecast. The weather lady said it would keep raining for two more days, but in 72 hours, it'd be bright and sunny. Kate turned to her boyfriend and said that the weather lady was wrong, and the girl was right. Why? Because in 72 hours, it will also be nighttime, so it can't possibly be bright and sunny. It was Amelia's dream to go skydiving, but she was afraid of heights. One day, her friend took her to fulfill her dream. Amelia jumped from an airplane without a parachute and didn't get hurt. How is that possible? The plane wasn't flying, it was still on the ground. Duh. Dave, an archaeologist, traveled to Egypt on a very special mission. He spent days excavating ruins hidden under the sand. And the only thing he found was a coin marked 10 BCE. When he showed it to his colleagues, they told him the coin was a fake. Why? Well, because the designation BCE didn't appear until after the beginning of our era. It was raining when Mrs. Moore called the police. She said someone had just bumped into her car and driven away. When the police arrived, the only person next to the place of the incident was a man fixing his tire. Mrs. Moore said that that was the car that had bumped into hers. However, the gentleman said that it couldn't be true because he'd been busy fixing his car the whole time. Can you tell who's lying? It's the guy fixing his car. The rain started just recently. If he'd been fixing his car this whole time, the ground underneath it would be dry. But look, it's wet. This means he's just arrived there and is actually the one responsible for the incident. Four friends decided to meet up for coffee one afternoon. Someone asked which one of them was the oldest, and they answered with a riddle. 
Mia is three times older than Anna. But three years ago, Anna was a year younger than Claudia is now. And Olivia is twice as old as Anna. So can you put the girls into order by age? The correct order is Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Claudia. Here's a quick one. What belongs to you, but others use it more often? Your name. Outside a fancy palace, two sentinels were guarding the main gate. They were standing, looking in different directions, one towards the west and the other towards the east. At some point, one of the sentinels asked the other, What are you smiling about? How could he know that his colleague was smiling? Well, despite the fact that they were looking in different directions, they weren't standing back to back. They were facing each other. Kevin was away on business and had to spend the night in a hotel. After a full day of meetings, he returned to his room to get some rest. He went to bed but couldn't fall asleep. After tossing and turning in bed for hours, he called someone, didn't say a word, and then finally fell asleep. Who did Kevin call? And how could he finally fall asleep? He called the room next door as his neighbor was snoring very loudly. The ringing woke the neighbor up, the snoring stopped, and Kevin managed to doze off. You've just come back from a long vacation. There, you bought a new suitcase to store all the new things you got. But you don't remember the code. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone to help you decipher the code to open the lock. 682. One digit is right and in its place. 614. One digit is right but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are right but both are in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right, but in the wrong place. What's the three digit code? Zero, four, two. Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and right now, the construction works are starting. His boss asked Dennis to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects, asking lots of questions. But the sky is cloudless. What does he need an umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Nathan came to his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got! A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago. Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 BCE. Detective Aaron Jones got a call late at night. It was his neighbor. I've heard a very loud noise coming from the house next door. I'm afraid to go there to investigate alone, but what if something has happened? When Aaron and his neighbor arrived at the place, they saw the entrance door open. They ran inside and found the house owner, Mr. Anderson, on the floor of his bedroom, tied and moaning in pain. He said he had been in bed reading a book, and then a man in a black mask broke into his room and hit him on the head. Then he tied Mr. Anderson, took all his money and other valuables, and disappeared. 
Detective Jones didn't believe the man. Why? Look at his bed. There isn't even a wrinkle on the cover. It's unlikely that the thief made the bed after tying Mr. Anderson, which means the man is lying. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Joan took part in an experiment, testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. She had to crack riddles to get to the next level. Right now, the girl is locked in a small room. The door will open automatically once she figures out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 85491763 The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their name. 8, 5, 4, 9, and so on. Joan managed to get out of the room and is ready for the next task. This time, the girl needs to join all the blue points on the screen. But she's allowed to use only three lines. How can she do it? She's drawn a triangle. Its three sides include all the dots. The next level is rather scary. Joan is locked in a room that's slowly filling with water. This process will only stop when the girl figures out how this equation can be true. 29 minus 1 equals 30. Even under these stressful conditions, Joan managed to crack the puzzle. She replaced the numbers with the Roman numerals, xxix minus i equals xxx. Then she removed the one i from 29, xxix, and got 30, xxx. Wow, this was a riddle with a lot of excess. And finally, Joan is given the last test. She needs to figure out which object is the odd one and doesn't belong to the group. Can you do the same? It's the first object. It's the only one that doesn't have any individual traits. The second object is uniquely round. The third doesn't have a red line around it. The fourth shape is a different color. And the fifth one is smaller than the rest. Two cars are driving through the city. They both started their journey at the same time. The green one is moving at a speed of 30 miles per hour. The yellow one is faster, its speed is 50 miles per hour. And still, at one point, the green car comes across the yellow car. How is it possible? Well, the cars were traveling in opposite directions. Look at this teenager and two women behind his back. Who is his real teacher? The answer is in the reflection behind their backs. You can see that both women are holding pointers. But in the mirror, only one of them has it. She is the real teacher. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can. And the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Evelyn wants to visit one unusual restaurant. But to get there, one must know the password. The girl hides around the corner to figure it out. She sees a man come up to the security guard. The guard says, 12. The man answers, 6, and is allowed to come in. Then a young woman approaches the security guard. He says six, and she answers three. Evelyn is sure she has figured out the pattern. She comes up to the security guard and hears him say four. The girl says two, and isn't allowed to enter. Why?
The password is always different. It's the number of letters in the word the security guard says. Like the word 12 has 6 letters. That's why Evelyn should have answered 4. A manager of the most luxurious sea resort in the area called the police. She said someone had stolen a set of very expensive monogrammed bed linen. Three guests left the hotel that morning. Mr. Sam Taylor, Mrs. Amanda Martin, and Mr. Michael Smith. The police detained one of the guests and, indeed, found the bed linen in their suitcase. How did the detectives figure out which person was the thief? As you can see, the hotel's name is Morning Star. This means the monogram on the bed linen was MS. The only person with the same initials is Mr. Michael Smith. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone had gotten into her house and stolen her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come home? But Hannah didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy was wearing white sneakers, but it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Jacob Robinson was spending his vacation in the mountains. One morning, he found out someone had stolen a big sum of money from the owner of the hotel where he was staying. Jacob offered the man his help and questioned all the hotel guests. Emma said, I felt unwell and spent all the evening in my room. Lewis explained to the detective that he had only arrived at 2 a.m. and had gone straight to bed. And Simon said, I've got friends living here in the village. I went to visit them and returned in the morning just an hour ago. Detective Robinson immediately realized who was guilty. Do you know it? It was Simon. Look at the snow around the hotel. It looks untouched with no footprints whatsoever. Then how did Simon get back from the village? Mrs. Williamson told her daughter Maya she wasn't allowed to see her boyfriend Luke until she prepared for her exam. After that, the woman went shopping. When she was coming back, she spotted Luke, who was walking along the street. When Mrs. Williamson returned home, she immediately realized Maya had seen her boyfriend. How did the woman figure it out? When she was leaving, there were five roses in the vase on the kitchen table. Now, there were only four. And when she saw Luke, he was carrying a rose. Private Detective Sean was waiting for his client in the lobby of a large hotel. The client was running very late. That's why, to entertain himself, Sean was observing the hotel guests. He noticed a man at the reception desk. He had four suitcases, but refused when the porter offered to help him with the baggage. The man went to his room, only to reappear five minutes later with the largest of his suitcases. Half an hour later, he returned without the suitcase and went to his room. Soon, he rushed to the reception shouting, My suitcases! They're gone! Sean introduced himself and, together with the hotel management, joined the man in his room. Something seemed off about the guy, and soon, the detective realized he was a fraudster. What did the man do? Each of his suitcases was smaller than the previous one. The man packed all of them into the largest suitcase and left with it. And then he pretended someone had stolen his things. Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. But there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. 
he doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed. Nellie is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nellie is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nellie decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nellie walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness? The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits, so he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too, so he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nellie moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nellie choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. Oh. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters the local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food? The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have? He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nelly a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. Mm. Nelly has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Ah. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nellie should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nellie finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nellie can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nellie decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. 
The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nelly pick the best option? There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So, Nelly should choose the second one. Nelly locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nelly passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nelly decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. Someone stole a rare diamond from Mr. Lauren's house. The police suspect Jack, a notorious burglar. A detective immediately goes to his house, but when Jack finds out the man doesn't have a search warrant, he doesn't let him in. In an hour, the police arrive again, this time with the warrant. They search the entire house, but find nothing. They're ready to leave when one of the police officers exclaims, I know where the diamond is! And have you figured it out too? When the police first came to Jack, his hair was much shorter. He must be wearing a wig, and the diamond is hidden underneath. On Tuesday afternoon, a man came to the police station. He claimed his car had been stolen. Detective Brown asked the man to show him the place where it had happened. They went to a movie theater. The man said that the day before, he and his wife had come to watch a movie. They left the car in the parking lot. But when the movie was over, the car was gone. After looking around for a couple of minutes, the detective understood who the criminal was. And have you figured it out? There was no theft. The man is lying to get the insurance money. Look, there are no movies on Monday. Maria Walker, a rich businesswoman, collected ancient pieces of art. One day, she managed to buy a priceless Chinese figurine. Maria locked it in a safe in her office and went home. But the next morning, the figurine was gone. Oh, no. The police have three suspects, all of them Ms. Walker's subordinates. The detective asked each of them if they had taken the figurine from the safe. Beverly said she hadn't been to the office since Monday. Ralph said, I don't know how to open safes, and I'm not interested in Chinese art. And Vincent said he had been to Ms. Walker's office after her departure, but he only took some documents he needed. Who is the thief? It's Ralph. Otherwise, how would he know the figurine was Chinese? A man wearing a hat, a bandana covering his face, and dark sunglasses robbed a bank. The police have three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out which one is the criminal. Usually, people tie bandanas under their ears. But in this case, the bandana covers the ears, probably hiding something that distinguishes the man from other people. The criminal must be the man with a large earring. Jesse Harris was a pilot. Once there was an emergency during a flight. Jesse had to land the plane right on the highway. Luckily, he was a skilled professional and no one was hurt. But Jesse himself hit his head and lost his memory. When he climbed out of the plane, two women ran toward him. Both of them claimed he was her husband. Can you figure out who's telling the truth? The woman on the left is a robot. Look, there's a USB port in her neck. Mary was a college teacher. It was the beginning of a new school year, and three new students joined the class. When Mary saw them, she immediately realized something was off about one of them. Who? It's the guy in the middle. He doesn't have a shadow. Logan worked as a security officer on a small cruise ship. 
One day, during a severe storm, he found Mr. Lewis lying on the deck. When the man came to his senses, he said someone had hit him on the head and taken his wallet. Logan had three suspects. He visited them in their cabins. Linda told him she was feeling queasy because of seasickness. She couldn't even get up from her bed. Denise said she had been watching a movie on her smartphone. And Philip said he had been writing a letter to his wife. Logan immediately understood who had hit Mr. Lewis. Do you know it? It was Philip. Look at his letter. The handwriting is immaculate. But it's impossible to write so accurately during a storm. Kayla went on a business trip. She didn't have time to tell her boyfriend about her plans. So she left him a note with clues. In it, the woman wrote, I'm in the city that is three of seven chicken, two of three cat, and one of two goat. I'll be here for a week. Come visit me. Do you know where Kayla's boyfriend should go? To Chicago. Yeah. Look at these guys carefully. Can you tell which one has drawn the graffiti? It's the guy on the left. He has some spray paint on his hoodie. Alan was driving along a small country road when he saw that someone had crashed their car into a tree. A moment later, he spotted a man running toward him. Help me, please! I was moving rather slowly when a truck suddenly cut me off. I lost control of my car and crashed into a tree. Alan gave the man a lift to the police station in the nearest town. They found the truck driver surprisingly fast. He was right near the doors of the police station. But the man denied cutting the smaller car off. He claimed he was going to the police to report the accident. Suddenly, Alan realized who was lying. Have you figured it out? Look at the tire tracks. It's obvious that those left by the truck go over the ones left by the car. It means the truck couldn't have cut the smaller car off, and its driver is lying. Several police officers were called to a hotel. One of the employees was found unconscious on the floor. The police checked the cameras to figure out what had happened. They didn't see the criminal, but now they had three suspects, all of them hotel guests. Sarah said, I heard some noise, but I stayed in my room because I was scared. James told the police he had been outside. He was trying to catch a taxi to go sightseeing. And Damien said he had been sleeping at home at the time of the accident. Who is lying? Damien. He's a hotel guest. Then how could he be at home sleeping? Beverly was making dinner in the kitchen when she heard glass shatter. She rushed to the living room and saw the window broken. Someone had thrown a stone that was now lying in the middle of the room. Beverly called the police, but they didn't manage to figure out who the culprit was. The next day, when Beverly came home from work, she saw something on her doormat. It was a note. Williamson was the surname of Beverly's neighbors. There were three teenagers in that family, Mark, Roy, and Natalie. Which one broke the window? It was Mark. The note says, question mark, Williamson. Bruce owned a large store that sold expensive designer items. Recently, there have been several thefts there. The man asked his friend Gabriel, who was a police detective, to check what was going on. Gabriel spent two hours in the store. When he left it, he knew who the thief was and who was guilty of these crimes. The thief was the detective himself. He easily stole a pair of costly sunglasses to prove that the store's security was very bad. That's the reason for so many thefts. One of these young women has a dog. Can you tell which one? It's the girl on the left. Her pooch has torn her sneakers. When Amy entered the office, she noticed that her colleague Emma was very upset. 
It was just the beginning of the workday, but someone had already stolen her purse. Only those who worked in the company could get into the office. Amy started her own investigation. Jenna, who worked in IT, said she had been fixing somebody's computer. Joanna, the secretary, answered she'd been on the phone with some clients. James, the sales manager, said, I've been in a three-hour-long meeting. I'm exhausted. Amy knew right away who had taken the purse. Can you figure it out? It's James. The working day has just started. How could he be in such a long meeting? There are two towns near each other. People who always tell the truth live in one of them. Liars live in the other. The inhabitants of the towns often visit each other. What questions should you ask a passerby to find out which town you're in? Ask them, are you a guest here? If they answer yes, you're in the town of liars. If they say no, you're in the town where honest people live. When it's raining, the cat is either in the room or in the basement. When the cat is in the room, the mouse is in the burrow and the cheese is in the fridge. If the cheese is on the table and the cat is in the basement, the mouse is in the room. Right now, it's raining and the cheese is on the table. Where are the cat and the mouse? The cat can be in two places, either in the room or in the basement. But at the moment, the cat can't be in the room because the cheese is not in the fridge, it's on the table. It means the cat is in the basement. And since the cheese is on the table and the cat is in the basement, the mouse must be in the room. Dora was on her way to work. When she was passing by a dark alley, she heard a loud scream. The woman came a bit closer to check it out. Someone was shouting, help, help me! But as soon as Doris saw the alley, she immediately called the police and ran away. Why? It was a trap. There were two kinds of footprints going into the alley, but no footprints coming out. One night, a gang of thieves were stealing boxes with electronics from a warehouse. They were carrying them to their van when they heard a police car siren. And still, even though the thieves didn't manage to avoid the police, they didn't get arrested. Why? They started to carry the boxes back into the warehouse, pretending to be a late-night delivery. You need to take two apples from your garden and bring them to your friend, but she lives on the other bank of the river. To get to her house, you have to cross a bridge. It can hold your weight and the weight of one apple. If you try to step on the bridge with two apples, it'll collapse into the water, which is swarming with piranhas. What can you do to bring your friend two apples if you can only make one trip? You should cross the bridge while juggling the apples. When is 1,893 and 2,548 smaller than 498? When they are years BCE. Susan worked in a clothing store that sold expensive designer items. One day, she discovered that someone had stolen a pair of pants. Look at the people who were inside at that time. Try to figure out who the thief is. It's the guy on the right. If you look attentively at his legs, you'll see the pants peeping out from under his jeans. A mad researcher caught Eric. He told the man, I'll let you go if you jump from a 30-foot tall ladder and remain unhurt. Eric thought a bit and did just that. How did he manage to avoid injuries? (laughs) 
he jumped from the bottom stair. Detective Michael Brown went missing while investigating a tricky case. His friend, Detective Williams, found out that one of their colleagues was behind his disappearance. Williams visited Brown's home, and his friend's wife gave him a note. Michael told me to give it to you if something happened to him. In the note, there were four numbers, two, eight, six, seven. Williams started to question his colleagues. I've been away visiting my parents, said Tess. Jack said, I haven't seen Brown for a couple of days. And Nora replied, I'm just a trainee. Detective Brown gave me a task and I was busy doing it. Williams thought for a while, looked at the note again and understood who was guilty. It was Tess, 2867. The first letters of these numbers make up her name. When Ashley came home in the evening, she noticed that the living room window was broken. She got angry. Her husband must have practiced his favorite soccer moves inside again. But the man said, I was sitting on the sofa watching a soccer match. Suddenly, a ball hit the window from the outside and broke the glass. He showed his wife the soccer ball he was talking about. But Ashley came to the window and immediately realized her husband was lying. How? The woman saw that the glass was on the ground outside the house. But if someone outside had kicked the ball and it had broken the glass, the shards would be inside the room. Three tortoises are having a walk in the park. One of them says, two tortoises are following me. The second tortoise says, one tortoise is moving in front of me and one is behind me. And the third tortoise says, two tortoises are traveling in front of me and one is behind me. How is it possible? The tortoises are moving in a circle. Stephen had a storeroom in his house. It got locked with a special padlock which could be closed without a key. But to open it, Stephen had to use one. The only person who had the key was Stephen. There were no duplicates. The man locked the door carefully every evening. But one day, a golden brooch was found lying in the middle of his storeroom. It had been stolen from the museum the day before. The police suspected that Stephen was the thief because no one else had the key and the man lived alone. Stephen knew for sure he was innocent, but then how did the brooch appear in the room? While Stephen was in the storeroom, the real criminal changed the padlock. Stephen didn't need the key to lock it. That's why he didn't realize the padlock had been changed. Later, the thief opened the lock with his own key and left the brooch inside the room. Look at these two detectives standing on a wooden board. Which of them is smarter? The one on the left. He can keep his balance by standing in the middle of the wooden board but the other detective can easily fall down. Once, a dance studio owner found Dylan, one of the instructors, lying on the floor in one of the rooms. Someone had hit the man on the head. The police questioned the dance studio workers and visitors and found three suspects. Chloe, a regular, said she hadn't visited the studio for several days. She had a couple days off and spent them sunbathing on the beach. Ethan, another instructor, told the police his friend had called him and asked for help. That's why he had left the studio before Dylan came to work. Layla, Dylan's girlfriend, told the police they had quarreled earlier in the morning. But after that, she didn't see Dylan. The police officers understood right away who was behind the attack. It was Chloe. She said she had spent several days on the beach, but her skin was extremely pale. There are four floors in a hotel. The higher the floor, the more people stay there. Which floor does the elevator visit most frequently? The 
the first floor. People from all the floors go there. A billionaire's wife called the police at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. She said she found her husband unconscious in his study. A baseball bat was lying next to him on the floor. The police questioned everyone who lived in the house. The wife said she had been away, buying her husband a present for their 10th wedding anniversary. The driver said he had left the evening before. He went to his parents' house because they needed some help. And the cook said he'd been preparing breakfast since 6 a.m. and hadn't left the kitchen. Who's lying? The wife. Stores aren't likely to be open so early on Sunday morning. You've got nine coins. One of them is fake, and it weighs a bit less than the others. You've also got a pair of scales, and you're about to do two weighings. How can you figure out which coin isn't real? The first weighing three coins and three coins. If one of these piles weighs less, the fake coin is there. If they have the same weight, the fake coin is in the third pile. The second weighing, take two coins out of the pile with the smallest weight. The lighter one is fake. If their weight is equal, the fake coin is the third one. Kevin woke up in a hospital. He only remembered his name and nothing else. A doctor came in to check on the guy. He said three young women were waiting to see Kevin. The women came in. Strangely, each of them had claimed she was the guy's sister. Only one of them is telling the truth. Who is it? It's the one in the middle. She has a birthmark on her hand, and Kevin has the same. Brenda promised her friend Larry to write an essay for their Friday lecture, but she had one condition. I'll help you if you increase 86 by 12 without adding anything to this number. Larry was able to do it. How? He wrote 86 on a piece of paper, turned it upside down, and he got 98. You're at home when your friends suddenly drop by. In your fridge, you only have a bottle of soda, some orange juice, and a bottle of water. What will you open first? The door of your fridge. Five cats need five minutes to catch five mice. How much time does one cat need to catch one mouse? the same time, five minutes. Amanda was going through a deserted park when someone hit her on the head. When she recovered, her bag along with her phone, money and documents were gone. There were no people around except for one elderly lady. Amanda rushed towards her, explained the situation and asked to call the police. The lady told her not to worry and started to press 911 on her phone. After talking for a minute, she said, they're going to be here in no time. As soon as Amanda heard these words, she sprinted off. Why? Amanda saw the lady's phone didn't have any signal. Then how could she call the police? A glass jar is standing on the table so that part of it is in the air. In half an hour, the jar will fall to the floor. Why? What's inside the jar? Inside the jar, there's some ice, but its weight is distributed in such a way that the jar is balanced. Once the ice melts and turns into water, the jar will fall. It's vacation finally! Yay! You can buy a ticket to an unforgettable island full of entertainment. The helicopter takes you there. Unfortunately, you won't be able to relax much because you need to solve puzzles in addition to having fun. And at the end of the video, count how well you went through it. You're going to have fun all day. Challenging riddles require concentration and attention. 
but you want to solve them in a relaxed way this time. Enjoy! The first thing you do is go to a beach party. Sun, ocean, hot, white sand. You take a soda and go dancing. All of a sudden, the music stops. You ask the DJ what happened. Someone pulled the wire from the speakers, she says. You go behind the stage and see five chords. All of them have different colors. Two of them need to be inserted into the speakers. Which ones? Hurry up, save the party. Red and green. There are marks with corresponding colors in the left corner of each speaker. The party goes on. You're tired and hungry, so you go to a restaurant. There's a huge buffet with hot dishes. You take two sandwiches and sit down at the table. After a delicious meal, you decide to have some fresh fruit for dessert. You come up to the table with bananas, apples, pineapples, and kiwis. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which of them, and why is that? All the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of kiwis left. People don't take them since they're not very fresh. After lunch, you go to the beach. The sand is so hot that you can fry eggs on it, so you put on your shoes. You see a group of people playing volleyball. You want to join them, get closer, but the game field is empty. Was it a mirage, or did the people leave the spot so quickly that you didn't notice? What do you think? It was a mirage, since there are no footprints in the sand. The sun is hot, and you decide to go into the jungle to hide in the shadows. You go out into a wide clearing and see several people sitting in the lotus position. It's a meditation session. People relax with their eyes closed and do not see that you've come. You carefully sit down next to them and realize that something is wrong with all these people. What is it exactly? They don't just sit, they're floating a couple inches off the ground. Who are they? You get scared and run away from this place. You run through the jungle and see three roads. One is littered with broken glass. There are plants with thorns on the second road, and you see hot coals on the third one. Which one will you choose? Actually, you can go everywhere. You put on your shoes on the beach, remember? In the very center of the island, you find a big old house. Its roof is destroyed and the windows are broken. But there's music coming from the building. You look inside and see a group of people in raincoats dancing to techno. You join the party and notice that each person has long fangs peeking out of their mouth. The dancers turn to you and look unfriendly. At first, you get scared, but then you realize these people are only pretending to be vampires. Fangs and cloaks are part of the masquerade. How do you know they're not vampires? The roof of the building is destroyed. The sunlight gets inside. The vampires should be afraid of it. You keep dancing, and at that moment, you get terrified. The dancers aren't vampires, but they're not humans either. Why do you think so? There's a mirror on the wall, and only you are reflected in it. You run out of the building and go through the jungle. White pigeons fly past you, and in the distance you can hear people's voices. You make your way through the bushes and find yourself at a wedding ceremony. People are sitting on the chairs. A bride, a groom, his friend, and two bridesmaids are standing in front. Everything seems fine, but then you realize that one of these people is an alien. Who? The bride. You can see that she has three hands. It doesn't scare you too much. After the ceremony, the party begins. You speak with the guests, take drinks and snacks. 
an old man gets on the stage to deliver a speech. He says that he has a gift to the newlyweds, an elixir that makes a person younger by five years and prolongs life. The same elixir is inside every drink, and everyone can drink it. All the guests rush to the table and grab glasses. Someone drinks two glasses at once. Someone five to six glasses in a row. Someone quickly drinks only one. And among all the people, there is an old lady. She slowly drinks her cocktail and becomes a little younger. Why did the elixir affect her, but not the other guests? The elixir was in ice cubes. The old lady drank for a long time, and the ice in the glass had time to melt. You leave the party and continue exploring the island. Ahead, you can see a tunnel with a warning sign. Beware the phantom inside. A guy and a girl come up with you. They offer to run through the tunnel to check if there are really ghosts there. So it won't be scary, you all run holding hands with each other. The girl is in the middle. It's cold and slippery inside the tunnel. You can't hear anything. You're approaching the exit and finally got out. It was a little scary, you say. It's good that I was in the middle, said the girl. Me too. I wasn't afraid, says the guy. At this point, you realize there was a phantom inside the tunnel. How did you figure that out? Three people ran through the tunnel, and only one could be in the middle, the girl. Whose hand was the guy holding? You get scared and leave this place. Evening. You go back to the hotel and see that it's on fire. There's a fire on your floor. You run inside. Fire is everywhere. You have two valuable things that you want to take away. A small safe with documents and money and a laptop with your work. You need to choose one thing. Take the computer. Most safes can withstand high temperatures, but a laptop is unlikely. You can find your safe after the fire. You've got a different room on the 10th floor. It's spacious with an ocean view. You're about to go to bed, but someone is knocking on the door. It's the administrator. She says there's a snake in your room, but you need to find it. Look around and find the reptile. Do you see those beaded curtains behind the second room? Among the beads, you can notice the outline of a snake. You release the snake into the jungle, return to your hotel, and notice footprints on the parquet floor. Oh. Someone was here and wanted to steal something. You call the administrator and tell her what happened. She has already found three suspects, and you need to guess which one of them broke into the room. There are two guys wearing shoes and a barefoot girl. Who will you choose? The girl couldn't leave these footprints. The guy who's standing next to her has soaking wet clothes on. His feet are also wet, but he has put on his sandals to hide them. The footprints in the room were wet. The second guy's clothes are dry. The girl's clothes are dry too, which means the guy wearing wet clothes got into your room. You can't fall asleep in the new room. It's already 3 a.m. and you decide to take a walk on the beach. Suddenly, you hear some noise. A beautiful girl is standing outside the window. She's smiling and looking at you. <laughs> at first, you smile back, but then you pick up your stuff and quickly run out of the room. You call the administrator and say that you won't stay in this hotel any longer. Why did you do that? Your room is on the 10th floor. The girl looked at you outside the window and you got scared. You can't sleep until morning and decide to leave this island. You sit on the sand and wait. A helicopter arrives and lowers a rope ladder. You're about to climb it, but at this moment, another helicopter arrives. It has the same rope ladder too. Now you need to choose the right helicopter. Take a closer look at the pilot of the first helicopter. It's an alien. You get into the second helicopter and fly away. 
the first one turned out to be a spaceship. Your vacation has come to an end, which means it's time to see what you've achieved. 0 to 4 points. Try to solve more logic puzzles and you'll be able to do better. Or maybe you just decided not to strain yourself too much and relax on this vacation. 5 to 8 points. Not bad. The party and the celebration atmosphere didn't dull your attentiveness and resourcefulness. But you can do better. 9 to 12 points. You were able to relax because you not only had fun, but also trained your brain. 13 to 15 points. You can quickly solve logic riddles and find a way out of any problematic situation. But don't forget to rest and relax your mind. Wendy and her roommates at college decided to find jobs to earn some money for an epic trip to Asia on summer vacation. Wendy downloaded a special job search app. The app offered her to solve a riddle to prove she was human. Tomorrow, I'm sure here. Yesterday, I'm found as well. Today, I'm gone. What am I? Wendy gave her answer right away and passed the test. What did she say? The correct answer is the letter R. Wendy filled her profile and received three job offers right away. Josh needed help at his coffee shop because his barista went on vacation. Trisha was ready to give Wendy a job on her bee farm. And Dylan offered good money for washing his car. What job should Wendy choose? There's a flying cat at the bee farm, so it's probably not quite safe there. This car doesn't belong to Dylan. Take a look at the picture hanging on the wall of the gas station. This car is stolen, and Dylan is the thief. Wendy's best choice is the coffee shop. Wendy arrived at the coffee shop and saw something very weird right away. Can you see it too? There's a fish on the shelf with pastries. Wendy's new boss, Josh, said, That was just a welcome prank to check how attentive you are. Josh gave her an apron and told her to get down to work. But Wendy gave him the apron back because she was sure that he was going to prank her again. Why? Take a look at the coffee shop logo and the logo on Josh's t-shirt. They don't match the logo on Wendy's apron. He challenged her attentiveness once again. A group of six students entered the coffee shop. Wendy was very nervous because they were her first clients. She asked, what would you like to order? The students decided to play a game with Wendy. The first guy showed her this pair of emojis. And Wendy cracked this puzzle right away. What did the guy order? A sandwich. Another guy showed Wendy these two emojis. Can you help her solve this? He ordered mashed potatoes. A shy student showed Wendy this combination. Can you crack it? He ordered fish fingers. And finally, the last student ordered this dish. Can you help Wendy figure it out? It's pepperoni pizza. Four friends from that group of students ordered raspberry tea. But two remaining members of the group ordered different drinks. Rob took a glass of lemonade, and Rosie asked for a double espresso. The guys drank tea, and five minutes later, they got very sick and fainted. Wendy called the ambulance. She suspected that Rosie and Rob were behind this accident. So the girl asked them why they had ordered different drinks. 
Rob said he'd taken lemonade because he was allergic to blackberries. And Rosie said that she hadn't slept last night and needed a big dose of caffeine. Who's lying? Rob. He's allergic to blackberries, but the guys drank raspberry tea. At the end of her work shift, Wendy went to the coffee shop basement to check the supply of drinking water. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind her back, and she had to find another way out. Wendy walked through a creepy tunnel and saw three doors. Behind the first door, there were powerful UV lamps. Behind the second door, angry dogs were waiting. And a tunnel behind the third door was on fire. What door should Wendy choose? The third one. She can take several large water bottles and put the flames out. Next day, Wendy got a task to deliver some books. When she arrived at the needed address, she saw a building with a metal door. The door was locked, but there was a note next to the combination lock. It said, Rose, Daisy, Aloe, and Sunflower. Can you help Wendy figure this passcode out? Here's a hint. One word on this list is different from the rest. Which one? Aloe. It's not a flower. Wendy entered the building. A cute old lady received the delivery. She offered Wendy extra tips if she managed to crack her riddle. A cloud is my mother. The wind is my father. My son is a cool stream. And my daughter is the fruit of the land. A rainbow is my bed, the earth my final resting place, and I'm the torment of man. What am I? Can you help Wendy earn some extra cash? The correct answer is rain. Wendy got a new task to organize a music concert in a jazz club. There, she met six musicians, and all of them had tattoos on their shoulders. They offered Wendy to guess who was the last one to join their group. Can you help her crack this puzzle? They use letters in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, E. So, this drummer is the newest member of the band because his tattoo includes the letter F. Wendy's boss gave her an envelope with money and asked her to give it to Dan. Wendy asked, but how can I recognize him? The boss said Dan wore a red hat. Wendy entered the concert hall. It was full of people, and Wendy saw many guys in red hats. Can you count exactly how many? It's eight. But which of these guys is the real Dan? Nope, not this guy with Dan written on his t-shirt. And not this guy with Dan on his tattoo. The real Dan is over here. Look at his badge. It says Dan. The rest of the guys have different names on their badges. Early in the morning after the concert, Wendy drank a cup of coffee, felt unwell, and fainted. Ten minutes later, she woke up in a weird basement. Four doors could lead her either to freedom or into a trap. Behind the first door, there were hungry bats. Behind the second door, there were rabid foxes. Behind the third door, there were venomous tarantulas. And behind the fourth door, there were venomous snakes. Which door should Wendy choose? She should choose the first door. Bats are nocturnal animals. They sleep in the morning. Next day, Wendy received a task from Shelly. She was the owner of a small art store and needed help with sorting paints by color. 
Unfortunately, Shelly's cat mixed them all up. Can you see any odd color among all these paints? Here it is! What about these tubes? Are they all similar? Nope, paints number 2 and 6 are different. Can you help Wendy spot the odd color here? Paint number 1 is a little darker than the rest. What about this box? These colors are the same. A bank was robbed on a Friday evening. There were no customers and no signs of a break-in, which meant it was one of the bank employees. The robbery was discovered by the bank director, Mr. Perry. There were three main suspects, Ms. Cott, Mr. Mendez, and Ms. Morgan. All of them denied being anywhere close to the safe. But one of them lied. Who was it? Pay attention to the footprints. These must belong to Mr. Perry. But there's another pair, which must be heels. Mr. Mendez is wearing sneakers, and Miss Morgan is wearing flats. Miss Cott is the only one wearing heels. The footprints are likely to be hers, so she lied. Mrs. Nichols has four daughters and a son. The oldest daughter's name is April. She's an artist. The second daughter is December. She's into sports. Her third daughter is August, and she's keen on cooking. May is the fourth one, and she likes reading. Their brother Adam is the youngest in the family. How is his name connected to his sisters? The first letters of the girls' names make up the name Adam. Another family riddle for you. Ava is Bella's sister, Bella is Ella's sister, and Ella is Ruby's mother. Who is Ruby for Ava? If Ava is Bella's sister and Bella is Ella's sister, it seems like the three of them are sisters. Since Ruby is Ella's daughter, then both Ava and Bella are Ruby's aunts. So Ruby is Ava's niece. Take a look at these friends of the beach. Which of them is a robot? It must be this girl. Look, it's very hot outside and everyone is sweating, except her. That's kind of odd. The police also broke into three apartments. In one of them, a robot lives. Can you guess where? Look, there's a lot of machine oil in the bathroom. I'll bet it belongs to the robot. What about this photo? Can you spot a robot here? It's summer, and everyone is wearing shorts and tops. Except for this guy. He's wearing long pants, a long sleeve shirt, and even gloves. He must be hiding his body. I'd say it's him. Here's a photo of people sitting in a cafe. Can you spot a robot here? It must be this lady, since she's not drinking or eating anything. Guess why? Well, robots can't eat human food, obviously. Another peek into some people's houses. One room belongs to a robot, but which one?
It must be this one. Look, there's a whole bunch of bolts and spare parts in the wardrobe. Have a look at this group of friends. Can you tell which of them is a robot? It must be this guy. There's some steam and sparks coming from it. Perhaps it's a robot that needs some renovations. Eiko has won a game show, and she can finally get her prize. But there's a catch. One last task. There are three boxes, and she can pick one to take with her. One box is filled with $100 bills. Another box contains 5-cent coins. And the last box has both bills and coins. The boxes look exactly the same, and the girl can't touch any of them. The boxes have labels. Bills on the left one, coins in the middle one, and bills and coins on the right one. All the boxes are labeled wrong. Eiko can't look inside any of the boxes, but she can ask for one sample from any box. What should Eiko's strategy be to identify the box filled with bills only? Since all the boxes are labeled wrong, Eiko should ask for a sample from the bills and coins box. If there's a bill there, then that's the one she needs. She should simply take it. If there's a coin, then it's the box with coins. In that case, the remaining boxes contain bills and bills with coins. And since the labels are incorrect, the one with bills is the one marked with the label coins. The day that is tomorrow for the day after tomorrow is as far away from Wednesday as the day that is yesterday for the day before yesterday. So, what day is it today? The tomorrow for the day after tomorrow and the yesterday for the day before yesterday are exactly three days away from today. If they're equally far away from Wednesday, then today is Wednesday. Meadow loved animals, and she decided to get some frogs. She talked to her mom about it, and they made a decision. Only one of these three statements is correct. 1. Meadow got at least one frog. 2. Meadow got at least five frogs. 3. Meadow got fewer than five frogs. How many frogs did Meadow get? So, only one statement is correct. If it's the first one, then the other two must be wrong. In this case, she can't get five or more frogs, so it doesn't work. If the second statement is correct, then she has at least five frogs. But then the first statement is automatically correct too. Let's say the third statement is correct, so she got fewer than five frogs. Automatically, the second statement is wrong. But for the first statement to be wrong too, she should have got fewer than one frog. So it seems that, after talking to her mom, Meadow got zero frogs. Mr. Wilson's company was having lots of financial problems. One day, the man called the police. He said someone had broken into his office. They stole my safe with all the money I had. The police officers who came to investigate asked the man why he was sure it was they. Well, my safe was too heavy for one person to carry it. The police instantly realized Mr. Wilson was lying. How? If the safe had been indeed so heavy, it would have left dents in the carpet. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the bag with the money in the park. It was lying among cacti. The police officers arrested three suspects. It didn't take long to figure out who the bank robber was. Do you know who it is? It's the man on the left. He's the only one with some scratches. They were left by the cacti. The police suspected that Deborah took part in smuggling diamonds out and into the country. But they didn't have any proof. That's why Detective Taylor was following the woman, trying to find some evidence. One day, he noticed that Deborah entered a house. But when she left it, Taylor realized she didn't have any diamonds on her. She must have left them in the house. 
How did he understand? Deborah was wearing boots with removable heels. The diamonds were hidden there. Look at this picture carefully and try to figure out who the guy's mom is. The woman on the right is definitely human. She can't breathe underwater. But the guy doesn't have any problems with that. He's smiling and looks relaxed. Plus, he has gills. That means the mermaid is his mother. Detective Martin was choosing a diamond ring for his fiance when a man in a black mask ran into the jewelry store. He made all the visitors lie on the floor and took the most expensive jewelry and money. After that, Detective Martin saw the man get on a red motorbike and speed away. The police officer jumped into his car and set off on a chase. At one point, he came to a crossroads. Where should he go now? Suddenly, Martin saw a car coming from the opposite direction. He asked the driver if he had seen the red bike. No, I've only seen a silver convertible and nothing else. Then, the detective saw a gray car appear from the left. The woman inside said she hadn't seen the red bike, but she'd seen a yellow bike and a group of cyclists. And the man who appeared from the right told Detective Martin he'd only noticed a large blue truck. Where is the robber? The motorbike can only be inside the blue truck. A unique diamond was exhibited in a famous museum. It was guarded at all times, and only small groups of 10 people were allowed to enter the room. After one of such groups had left, an alarm went off. The guards ran into the room and found there a young man. They searched him. There were just several bills, a lighter, a bottle with soda, a camera, and a cell phone in his bag. The guards had to let the man go. But the next morning, it was announced that the diamond had been stolen. How did it happen? The man replaced the real diamond with a fake one and hid the real treasure in his bottle with soda. Mr. Raymond Lopez, a rich businessman, urgently needed his assistant. But the guy was on vacation in the countryside. It was Wednesday when Mr. Lopez sent him a letter asking the man to come to the city as soon as he could. Now it's already Sunday and no assistant in sight. Raymond decided to go and check on the guy. When he arrived, he found out that his assistant was okay and packing his stuff. Oh, Mr. Lopez, I received your letter just yesterday. I was going to leave in a half an hour, he exclaimed. You're fired. I don't need people I can't trust. You just wanted to have a longer vacation, that's all. Why did Mr. Lopez think so? The calendar on the assistant's table shows that it's Monday, November 4th. But there's no mail delivery on Sundays. The guy is lying. Someone robbed a bank in a large city. A police detective went to visit the main suspect. I've been feeling unwell all this week, and I haven't left my apartment for three days. I didn't even need food. My fridge is full. You can make sure yourself, the suspect said, and indeed opened his fridge. But the detective realized the man was lying and arrested him. How did he figure it out? First of all, the bread on the table looks fresh. Plus, if the man had been staying inside for three days already, his fridge wouldn't be that full. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that didn't cost anything. He knew about this fact. He was also an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. After several crimes had been committed in the city, the police decided to visit the main suspect. He lived in the countryside. When the officers entered the house, they found no one inside. They searched the entire place, including the attic, which was in a mess. Then they decided to wait for the house owner to come home. One of the police officers went to buy some water. 
when he came back, he told the rest of his colleagues there was no need to wait anymore. Why? The attic window was closed when the police first arrived. But now it's open. The criminal was hiding in the attic and escaped through the window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side. But the boat can only hold one of them. And still, they manage to get across the river. How? They were on the opposite banks. Detective Adams came to the park to have lunch outside in the sun. But his attention was drawn by three men running around a fountain. Each of them was shouting, Thief! Catch the thief! The detective was confused. Who was the real thief? That's why he just kept watching. After some time, the distance between the men shortened. Detective Adams immediately realized who the real thief was. Can you figure it out too? If the third man was the thief, the second one would only have to turn around to catch him. The same goes for the second man, which means the man running the first is the criminal. How can you put a whole apple into a glass bottle without cutting the fruit or breaking the glass? Put the bottle over an apple tree branch in the spring. Then wait until an apple grows inside. Scott, an infamous burglar, came home one evening. Just a day before, he had stolen some very expensive paintings from Mr. Smith's house. He was in the living room when he noticed several police officers approaching his home. Scott gave instructions to his wife and slipped out through the back door. When the officer knocked on the door, Scott's wife told him, My husband has been away for a week already. He's actually supposed to come home today. At this moment, Scott entered the house. He hugged his wife as if they hadn't seen each other for ages. But the police officers didn't believe them. Why? Look at the dog. If its owner had been away for a week, the pooch would be jumping around, happy and excited. But the animal saw Scott just a couple of minutes ago and isn't showing too much enthusiasm. If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? No way! In 72 hours, it's going to be night again. Detective Lee was called to a small family cafe. The owner told him her story. I went away to the kitchen for a couple of minutes, but when I came back, I saw that all the money from the cash desk had been stolen. At that time, there were only three visitors in the cafe. All of them were women. When the detective asked them who had taken the money, each of them exclaimed, It was her! The first woman added, The owner is my friend! How could I do this to her? The second woman said, I was looking out of the window, drinking my coffee. I didn't see anything. And the third woman claimed she would never steal anything. Who took the money? Detective Lee quickly figured out that the thief was the second woman. First of all, the two others pointed at her. Secondly, she claimed that the first woman had stolen the money. But if she really was looking out of the window, how could she know this? During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money. But he had to crouch to lace up his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to his senses, the money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? All emergency doors open outwards. A young lady has the same number of brothers and sisters. But each of her brothers has two times fewer brothers than sisters. How many sisters and brothers are there in the family? There are four girls and three guys in the family.
You return from a lunch break and discover that someone has stolen $30 from your bag. There are four suspects, Mila, Henry, Jackson, and Victoria. When you ask them about the money, Mila replies she hasn't taken it. Henry says he's pretty sure Jackson's got the money. Jackson shouts, no way, Henry's lying. And Victoria claims Mila's telling the truth. Only one of these people isn't lying. Who stole your money? It's Mila. She, Henry, and Victoria are lying while Jackson's telling the truth. If anyone else had taken your $30, there would be more than one person telling the truth. How can you get from 98 to 720 just by using one letter? Add the letter X between 90 and 8. You'll get 90 times 8 equals 720. The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. He was in a panic. Someone has attacked our chef! He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. Our rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business. When the police officers came to the restaurant, they learned that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police his vision had been blurred because of the tears and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimp when the accident happened. He said he'd been listening to music through his earphones and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. Shrimps in a vegan restaurant? Really? And how fast will you find the answer to this riddle? It equals 4. Cat equals 6. Time equals 8. Hippo equals 10. Cheetah equals... The answer is 14. Each letter equals 2. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. Before she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they cover her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. What usually happens with plants in math classrooms? They grow square roots. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How? It was the door he had entered through. A baby giraffe doubled in height every month till it reached its dad's size. It took 10 months. How many months did it take the baby giraffe to grow half its current height? Nine months. Now, have a look at these two guys. What do you think? Who will not survive? Most likely the guy on the left. His slingshot sure can cause some harm to the guy on the right, but he'll definitely survive. But should he step off the wooden board, the other guy will immediately fall into an abyss. A rich man, Mr. Thomas Green, 
disappeared right from his home. The detective assigned to this case found a note at the crime scene. It read, 1st of January, 4th of October, 5th of March, 3rd of June. The detective guessed that the criminal's name was hidden in the note. The suspects were Jack Green, the rich man's son and heir, June Green, the man's wife, and John Jacobson, Mr. Green's employee. The detective deduced the name of the culprit in no time. Can you do the same? These dates supposedly stand for the letters you need in the words. For example, means the first letter of the word January, J, and so on. It turns out John Jacobson has something to do with Mr. Green's disappearance. Try to crack this one. Quote, oh, 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 oh. That's pot eight O's, which is potatoes. One end, three end, five end, seven end. This rebus hides odds and ends. Knee friended, what can it mean? It's a friend in need. A student put his final exam paper into the pile of other students' papers. The professor told him, I saw you were cheating on the exam. You'll get an automatic fail. Strangely, the student just walked away. When the exam scores were announced, he found out he had an A. How come? The professor didn't know who the student was. That's why he graded his paper just like anyone else's. Detective James Anderson stopped the man who was leaving a clothing store. The sales assistant claims you've stolen some expensive gloves. These are my gloves. I've had them for ages. But the detective immediately understood the man was lying. How? The man wouldn't be able to use these gloves. They are both for the same hand. A phone call woke Detective Anderson early in the morning. My house has been burgled, Mr. Harrison shouted. When James arrived at the man's house, he heard the following story. While I was away on business, my neighbor Adam was looking after my house. That's when Adam decided to chip in. I heard some noise coming from Mr. Harrison's house yesterday. I came up to the window to check if everything was okay. It was very cold, and the window was completely frozen. I breathed on the glass to unfreeze it a bit and saw that everything inside was in a mess. I immediately called Mr. Harrison. And now, Detective Anderson said, tell us where the stuff you stole from your neighbor is. How did James understand Adam was guilty? Windows freeze from the inside, not outside. A rich man's wife disappeared from the hotel where she was staying. Detective Anderson had to inform and question her husband. He found the man on his own island. I've been here for the last two months. I asked my family and staff not to come and distract me. I'm writing a book. And over the past several weeks, I've been working from early morning to late evening. I haven't even left this cabin. Anderson immediately understood the man was lying. Ow. There's only a thick notebook and a pen on the man's desk. If he had been writing as much as he claimed, the ink would have finished long ago. Mr. Dillon sold beautiful rare vases. There were dozens of them on the shelves of his store. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, the owner had his head bandaged. His store was a mess. These guys ran into my store and grabbed the money and the most expensive vases. Then they hit me on the head and I blacked out. Detective Anderson immediately understood that Mr. Dillon was lying to get the insurance money. How did they figure it out?
Even though most of the vases are on the floor, they aren't even cracked. But if the vases had fallen down from the shelves during the robbery, they would have been shattered. Janet called the police. I was crossing the road when a car almost ran me down. I fell down and hit my head. When the police officers arrived at the place of the accident, Janet showed them the car that, as she thought, had almost hit her. The driver arrived at that moment. He denied doing it. Detective Anderson asked Janet to calm down. It really wasn't the car they needed to look for. How did he understand it? It was raining when Janet was crossing the road. But there's a dry spot under the man's car. It means it had been standing there for a long time and couldn't have hit Janet. Look at these two bloggers. As you can see, they both seem to be very popular. They also have the same amount of likes. But there's something wrong with one of them. She must be hiding something. What is it? The girl on the right is probably trying to save money at the moment. The logo on her bag looks like the Chanel logo, but it's written Gucci underneath. Detective Anderson was on a train. He had very nice fellow travelers. They were talking and laughing when the train entered a tunnel. Everything was plunged into darkness for several minutes. When the train left the tunnel, one of the passengers, Ella, exclaimed, My diamond brooch! It's gone! Everyone started talking nervously, looking at one another. That's when Anderson calmly said, I know who took the brooch. I saw it. How could he see it? One of the travelers had a watch with luminous hands. And when this guy moved his hand to take the brooch, James noticed it. It was a scorching hot day when Larry made a bet with his friends. The guy told them that water produced by different companies tastes different, too. At that time, they were chilling in the garden of one of Larry's friends, drinking water and lemonade. You can blindfold me. I'll take a sip from two bottles of water, the one we have on the table and the one you'll bring from the kitchen. I noticed it was another producer. I bet I'll be able to tell the difference. Then he did exactly that. His friends were ready to give Larry the money he had won, But Detective Anderson, yep, he was there too, cut in. You were cheating, he said. Why did he think so? It was an extremely hot day. No wonder the water that had been outside for several hours was much warmer than the water brought from the kitchen. Rachel called the police early in the morning. When they arrived, She told the officers her story. I work in a museum. Yesterday, I took home several ancient books. I wanted to do some research. But then, a blackout happened. I lit a couple of candles and continued my work. Suddenly, I heard the doorbell ring. When I opened the door, someone in a black mask hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, the books were gone. Detective Anderson arrested the woman for misreporting. Why? If there had been a blackout, the doorbell wouldn't have been working. Detective Anderson was walking along the river when he heard someone screaming. It was a young woman. She was drowning. James immediately left his shoes and backpack on the ground and dove into the water. Luckily, he was in time. When James was pulling the woman out of the river, he saw a passerby standing next to his stuff. "Uh, Unfortunately, I can't swim, but I looked after your things, the man said. Then why did you rummage in my backpack? James asked. How did he understand someone had opened his backpack? When he dropped the bag on the ground, the zipper was on the left side, but now it's on the right. Detective Anderson found out a smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. He arrived there and detained three suspects. Look at them and try to figure out who the smuggler is. It's the third passenger. 
His suitcase is full of totally random stuff. Women's shoes, some rugs, old dirty jeans, a wig. Plus, when closed, the suitcase looks much larger than when it's open. Detective Anderson's friend, Jose, hurt his knee while playing frisbee. The doctor let the guy stay at home, but by no means was he allowed to get up from his bed. Anderson was also there, and he promised the doctor to look after his friend. But at some point, he had to go away for several hours. He asked his sister Sarah to take care of Jose. When James returned, Sarah told him Jose had followed the instructions and had been sleeping for the whole day. But when Anderson entered his friend's room, he immediately realized the man had gotten up. How did he understand this? Jose moved his bedside lamp from the desk to his nightstand and plugged it in. Detective Anderson's sister, Sarah, was married to Michael, a professional cyclist. One Saturday morning, James came to visit them and noticed that everyone was extremely nervous. It turned out Michael was going to have a challenging cycling tournament. I promise I'll bring you the bouquet they give to the winner, Michael told Sarah. Four hours later, he indeed came back with beautiful flowers. But James realized right away Michael hadn't won the tournament. How? The flowers are actually from Sarah's garden. Detective Anderson was driving along a dangerous mountain road. Suddenly, he hit the brakes. He saw a man sitting on the side of the road crying. It turned out the man didn't manage to control his car. It fell off the road, and the man got thrown out of the window. Right now, his very expensive vehicle was beyond repair. Could you be my witness when I prepare the documents for my insurance company? James agreed, but asked the man to show him what was inside the car. The man took the key out of his pocket and unlocked the damaged vehicle. I won't take part in this fraud, Detective Anderson said. Why did he think the man was lying? If the man had been thrown out of the car, the key would still be in the ignition. Detective Anderson's friend Hannah called him and asked the man to visit her. She said it had to do with her husband, Martin. He told me he had to go on a business trip to the mountains. He didn't really want to go there because he hates cold weather. But he had to, so we packed tons of warm clothes and left. When Martin arrived there, he sent me a photo from his hotel room. I feel something's wrong with this picture, but what exactly? Anderson needed no more than a glance at the photo, and he realized Martin had indeed lied to his wife. How did he figure it out? There are palm trees outside the window. Those trees don't grow in cold climates. Ms. Harrelson called the police and reported that someone had broken into her house. When the officers arrived, they found the woman tied up to a chair. She said a man in a black mask had entered her house and tied her up so that she couldn't even move. Then he had stolen all her savings and left. But the officers didn't believe Ms. Harrelson and arrested her for misreporting. Why? If the woman couldn't move, how did she manage to call the police? It was Hazley's birthday. Her parents said that they had a present for her, but she had to find it first. To help the girl, they gave her a note that said, Where should the girl look for her present? It seems as if the note doesn't make any sense. But that's only because the two halves of each word are switched. If Hazley places them in the correct order, she'll get pretty straightforward instructions. Your present is hidden in the basement. Sydney told her mother that she and her gymnastics team were going to a sports camp for the weekend. Mrs. Stevenson knew her daughter well and suspected it was just an excuse. Sydney was going to spend the weekend with her boyfriend instead. Still, the woman helped Sydney pack and let her go. When the girl returned, she was angry with her mom for forgetting to pack a toothbrush. 
That was when Mrs. Stevenson realized she had been right and Sydney hadn't been to the sports camp. How did she figure it out? When she packed Sydney's things, she put the toothbrush in the bag with her gymnastics clothing. If her daughter had indeed been to the sports camp, she'd have opened the bag and found the toothbrush. But she didn't, which means she never used that bag. Look at these people who are doing their grocery shopping. One of them has stolen a watermelon. Can you tell who? It must be this guy on the right. He's holding a soccer ball, but it looks as if it's very heavy. And since soccer balls don't weigh much, it must be a disguised watermelon. Mason went on an expedition to Antarctica. His boss asked him to send pictures as proof that he was actually there. Mason sent pictures every day, but when he returned from the expedition, his boss fired him. Take a closer look at the pictures and try to understand what his boss didn't like. Mason was sent to Antarctica, but in some pictures, you can see palm trees. No wonder the boss realized the photos were photoshopped and Mason hadn't gone there at all. An old man had extremely poor vision. He was living with his son, Mark, because he needed assistance all the time. One day, the man was resting in his armchair while his son was preparing dinner. Suddenly, Mark heard glass shatter. The man ran into the room and saw that the window was broken. He asked what had happened. His father told him that some dark-eyed, dark-haired guy had thrown a stone into the window and shattered it. Then he ran away. But Mark didn't believe his father. Why? The man had extremely poor vision, and he wasn't wearing his glasses at the time of the accident. He couldn't see the guy, let alone the color of his hair and eyes. Savannah went on a business trip with her husband. In the evening, the woman didn't feel well and suddenly blacked out. When Savannah woke up a couple of hours later, she couldn't remember anything. There were two men in front of her and both claimed to be her husband. The woman couldn't remember which of them was her real husband. Can you help her figure it out? They went to a business meeting. That's why they are both dressed accordingly. The guy in a hoodie doesn't look formal, so her husband must be the other one, the man who's wearing a suit. Now, this girl, Susanna, can't remember who her husband is too. Can you help her? It must be this guy. Look, he's wearing a ring while the other doesn't seem to be married. Ava's parents, John and Catherine, came to the hospital to pick up the teenager. Can you tell which of these young people is their child? It's this girl. John and Catherine are Ava's parents. Ava is a girl's name, and she's the only girl in the room. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. By nighttime, she realized she had gotten lost again. She was wandering around until she came across the witch's house. The girl petted the cat, <laughs> greeted the witch, and asked the woman to send her home. At that time, the witch was participating in a math tournament for witches from all over the world. She really wanted to win and to prove she was the smartest witch out there. There was one last task she couldn't solve. The witch promised that if Esme helped her, she'd let her go home. If not, Esme would have to stay with the witch forever. Here's the task. Make three identical squares by moving only three matches. You just have to move these three matches over there. It works, and Esme can return home. Thor asked his friends to guess what his laptop's three-digit password was. Each of them made a guess. The numbers they chose were 357, 902, 907, 954. Even though no one's guess was right, 
Every person guessed one digit correctly and exactly in its right place. Can you figure out Thor's passcode? Since just one of them guessed one digit correctly, the first digit can't be 9. In this case, three people would have guessed it right. And there wouldn't be enough people to guess the third digit. The only other option for the first digit is 3. Which means the second digit can't be 5 and the third one can't be 7. Since the second one can't be 5, then it's 0. Two people guessed it correctly. And the third digit is 4. If it was 2, it would mean someone guessed two digits correctly, 0 and 2. But that's not true. So, Thor's code is 304. Students were divided into two teams to do one task. Storm, Dean, and Brooke were in Team Yellow. Elsie, Emma, and Veda were in Team Purple. Following the same logic, what group does Lexi belong to? In Team Yellow, there are students whose names have just one syllable. In Team Purple, there are students with the names that consist of two syllables. Lexi's name has two syllables, so she belongs to Team Purple. Atlas got trapped in the attic of an old house. There are just three ways out, and all of them dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made out of magnifying glass. And the sun will burn anyone who comes in. Behind the second door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas. And the third door is hiding a hungry lion. How can Atlas escape? He should wait until it's night. The sun will set, and the guy will safely walk through the first door. Now, take a look at Iris and her close friends. Max, Jenny, Josh, and Ren. Who's her partner? It must be Josh. Look, they have matching tattoos. On a rainy night, Dylan was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there. An elderly lady who was feeling unwell, a doctor who saved many lives, and Selena, a girl Dylan had been crushing on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in the car. What should Dylan do? He should give his car to the doctor, who would take the elderly lady and driver to the hospital. And Dylan can stay at the bus stop with the girl of his dreams. Charlie, Andy, Taylor, and Alex are all related to each other. But one of them is the opposite gender from the other three. Here's what you know. Alex is either Charlie's brother or Charlie's only daughter. Alex's sister is either Andy or Taylor. Taylor's only son is either Charlie or Andy. Can you tell who's the opposite gender from the other three? If Alex is Charlie's only daughter, then Alex cannot have a sister. It means that Alex is Charlie's brother. If Alex's sister is Andy, then Andy's a girl. And according to fact 3, Charlie is Taylor's only son. But Alex is Charlie's brother. So we have a contradiction here. It means that Alex's sister is Taylor. So Taylor's a girl. Charlie, Alex, and Taylor are siblings. And Andy is Taylor's son. Keenan was watching TV when a detective arrived with a search warrant. The detective said that the city bank had been robbed, and Keenan was the main suspect. The man replied that he hadn't even left the house that day. He couldn't do anything. The police didn't find the money, but still arrested the man. Why? Keenan said he hadn't left the house. But take a look at the calendar and the grocery store receipt. The dates are the same. It means Keenan at least did some grocery shopping and lied about not leaving the house. Robert was a collector of rare coins. One day, the man called the police. I got this coin only yesterday, he cried. I've been looking for it for several years, and now it's gone. I'll bet it's one of my brothers. Frederick and Matthew live together with me. 
One of them collects ancient books, and the other is crazy about rare stamps. All our collections are kept in one large room. The police started to ask Robert for more details. It turned out that the key from the room where all the collections were was kept in a vase standing on the fireplace. The only person who visited the house was Robert's friend, Mark. The man liked the coin so much that he started offering big money for it. But Robert didn't agree to sell it. In the morning, he came to check on the coin, but it was missing. When the police arrived, they found out the room had been opened with the key. The police didn't find any fingerprints either. Do you know who stole the coin? It was Mark. He was the only person who had a reason for getting rid of the fingerprints. The brothers' fingerprints would be absolutely natural since they lived there. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. It's nothing but holes tied to other holes. At the same time, it's as strong as steel, but not as stiff as a pole. What is it? It's a chain. Stephen's wife called the police and told them her husband had disappeared right from his garage. It happened several hours ago. The only thing she found there was a left-hand glove. When the police came, they saw it was a very peculiar glove. Such gloves were sold only in one store in their town. The store owner told them he had recently sold these gloves only to two people, Kevin, Stephen's neighbor, and Brian, Stephen's colleague at work. The police officers visited Kevin and asked the man to show them his gloves. But Kevin had just one. I uh, lost the other glove a week ago, and I don't have any other gloves. The man even pulled the glove on to demonstrate it to the officers. Then the police visited Brian. I was wearing these gloves when I was repairing my car. They got so dirty that I threw them away. Who do you think knows something about Steven's disappearance? Brian. Kevin put his glove on his left hand, and the glove Stephen's wife found was also for the left hand. A math teacher told his students about the Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw just one continuous line and turn IX into 6. The only condition was that the students were not to lift their pens from the paper until the line was finished. Jeffrey was the first to complete this task. How did he do this? He drew the letter S in front of IX and got 6. Both Sharon and Cynthia had a box of chocolates each. There were 14 chocolates in each box. Sharon ate several candies, and Cynthia ate the same number of chocolates that were left in Sharon's box. How many chocolates do they have together now? They still have 14 chocolates together. Kimberly inherited an old house from her rich aunt. When the young woman was exploring the cellar, she came across a massive wooden door. She opened it and saw a small room. In that room, there were three bags and a note on the floor. One of the bags has $1 million, and the others are empty. You can only open one bag, so think carefully. Kimberly also noticed there was a message on each bag. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. The message on the second bag was, the cash is not here. And the message on the third bag claimed, the cash is in the second bag. If only one message is true, which bag has the money? The money can't be in the second or third bags. If it was so, then two messages would be true. It means the money is in the first bag. When you look for something, you always find it in the last place where you search. Why is that?
It's always the last place where you look because, after this, there's no need to continue your search. A married couple went on a vacation and asked their neighbor to look after their house. When they returned, the wife found out that she had lost all her expensive jewelry, and it happened because of a power failure, no less. The woman had hidden her jewelry in a supposedly safe place. The house hadn't been burgled. The neighbor was an honest person. The jewelry had disappeared by accident. What happened? The wife hid her jewelry in the freezer in a bag with frozen food. After the power failure, the food got spoiled. The neighbor decided to help and threw away all the bad food from the fridge along with the jewelry. You're locked in a room with three doors. It's safe to walk through any of them, but the doorknobs are the real problem. One of them puts out high voltage. The second is covered with poison. Just one drop on your skin and you won't survive. And the third doorknob is so hot, it will make your hand burn. What doorknob should you opt for? The second one. You can take off any piece of clothing and open the door with its help. This way, you won't touch the doorknob with your bare hand. A woman was hit by a car that sped away right after the accident. When the police arrived, they found several witnesses who described the car. The detective went to the house of one of the suspects. There, he saw a car that looked like the one in the description. But when he questioned its owner, the man claimed he had spent the whole day at home. The detective realized the suspect was lying right away. How? He touched the hood of the car. It was still warm from the engine. I was driving along the highway when one of my tires burst. I stopped to change it, but when I came back to the car, I saw it had a flat battery. I looked around and realized I was in the middle of a small town. I decided to wait for someone who could help me. Suddenly, I heard glass shatter. The night was very dark, so I switched on the headlights and saw a man climbing out of a house. He was carrying a large bag. I got scared and ran to the nearest police station. That was Mr. Darrison's story. The police detective who was listening to him asked, And where did you hide everything you had stolen from that house? How did he come to that conclusion? If Mr. Darrison's car battery was flat, how could he switch on the headlights? Dylan was trapped in a basement. The only thing he found inside was a note and a pen. Find the way to get 200 out of 188 with one line, and you'll be free. Five minutes later, the door opened automatically, and Dylan was free. What did he do? He drew the line to divide 188 horizontally. That way, he got two ones and four zeros. A woman in a purple dress exclaimed, I've never been to this store, Cinderella dresses. What kind of name is this? But many people claim that a woman in purple took all the money from the cash desk while the shop assistant was away and ran out of the store, Detective Smith told the woman. The woman exclaimed, I was just standing outside when suddenly a woman charged at me. Of course I got scared and ran away. Then a police officer saw me running and stopped me. I agreed to return to the store, hoping it'd clear up the confusion. Several visitors said I could be the thief, but they weren't sure. Now I know you're the woman who stole the money, the detective said. How did he figure it out? The woman said, return to the store, which means she had been there before and lied about the whole situation. Your company produces shoes. You have two factories in different cities. The workers of both factories have started to steal shoes. You can't use any additional security, but you have to stop the theft. How can you do it?
One factory should start making only left shoes, and the other only right ones. Detective Aaron Bowler participated in a competition organized by a private consultant who came from Europe. Aaron wanted to become the detective of the year very much. It was the evening of the last day of the competition. The consultant explained what would happen next. You will all gather in a large room. Once you hear a shot outside, you'll need to rush in and find the criminal. The winner will be the person who will get to them first. You aren't allowed to use any equipment or tools. Several hours passed, and the people in the room started to get nervous. Suddenly, Aaron got up and went to another room. His colleagues asked him where he went. But the guy only answered, I need to get ready for the chase. And he took a seat without switching on the light. Several minutes later, the detectives heard the shot. Aaron ran outside and was the first to catch the criminal. The consultant gave the man his prize and asked, what helped you to be the first? What did Aaron answer? His eyes didn't need to get used to the darkness outside because he had already spent some time in a dark place. Okay, let's have a little break now. I'll be showing you an emoji, and your task is to find the one that doesn't belong to the group. Ready? Here's the first one. What do you say? I'd say that this one doesn't belong here. All the others are blue. Okay, here's another set for you. Will you manage to find the one that doesn't belong here? All of them except for this one are sports equipment. Any ideas here? Yes, they're all summer related, but this one doesn't really fit in. And the last set for you. Will you manage to find the odd one? These are all real everyday objects, but this one is magical. So, it's the odd one out. Belle and Chloe are twins. One year, Belle had her birthday on Friday. Oh, yes. Chloe celebrated her birthday two days later on Sunday. The guests who came to both parties didn't believe that twins could have birthdays two days apart, but the girls showed their IDs and explained everything. So, how is it possible? The twins were born at night. Belle was born right before midnight on February 28th, and Chloe was born right after midnight on March 1st. This year was a leap year, and February 29th came in between these dates. Inoni lives on a farm where she has horses, rabbits, and chickens. Here's what she says about her horses. All of my horses except for two are black. Also, all of them except for two are brown. And all of them except for two are white. How many horses does Inoni have, and what color are they? She has just three horses, one black, one brown, and one white. There was a diversity week at school, and one of the students was robbed. (gasps) Detective Callum interrogated three main suspects. Eliza said she'd been working in the cafeteria the whole time. Asher pointed at one of the flags and said he'd been fixing it since it had been hanging upside down. Hmm. Naya said that the student who had been robbed was her best friend, so she never would have done that. Who is guilty? Asher, the flag that was supposed to be hanging upside down is actually symmetrical. On a rainy day in the summer, a house in a small neighborhood was robbed while the owners were away. The police came to interrogate four neighbors. Everyone said that it had been raining. They'd been at home all day, eating and watching movies. Take a look at the houses. Who is lying? Reed is lying. 
Look, the ground under his car is wet, which means he arrived after it had started raining. So he did leave his house. Miss Virginia Dell was a rich gentleman's daughter. She was staying at her hotel room when a security guard called her. He told her to run away since the criminal was going up to her room. Miss Dell ran to the elevators, but in each of them, there was a man. Which elevator is safe for her to use? The criminal obviously came from the first floor, and since this man is going down, it must be safe to go with him. Really? Dakota woke up in a dungeon. She couldn't remember what had happened. After wandering around for a while, she found out it was a vampire's castle guarded by the creature himself. Also, she found three chests. One of them was full of gold coins. Another was filled with silver coins. And the third chest was full of diamonds. Dakota could take any chest with her, but she wouldn't be able to get past the vampire anyways. What should the girl do? Dakota should take the chest with silver coins. Vampires are afraid of silver, so she'll be able to walk past him. Amelia is participating in a game show, and here is her last task. If she completes it, she'll win. She has cubes with these numbers. She should use three of them so that the sum total is equal to 30. Which ones should Amelia use? She should turn the cube with 9 over to get 6, and then use it along with 11 and 13. Sienna must leave the house in exactly 9 minutes. The power is off and her cell phone battery is flat. Sienna has two hourglasses. One measures 7 minutes and the other measures 4 minutes. How can she use them to measure exactly 9 minutes? Sienna should start both hourglasses at the same time. When the 4-minute hourglass runs out, she should start it again. 4 minutes will pass. When the 7 minutes hourglass runs out a bit later, she should start it again. It'll be 7 minutes. The 4-minute hourglass will run for one more minute together with the 7-minute one. When it runs out of sand, it'll be 8 minutes. Sienna should then flip over the 7-minute hourglass. It'll have sand in its top part for exactly 1 minute. Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things, but at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She
she should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno, Gabriella was reading, Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. A young actress, Chanel, was staying there. She said some man dressed in black and wearing a mask broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first, then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom. 
but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, all I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, it must be Wednesday, or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt, maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. Paige said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Paige to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. Each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement. And Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out, thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock. Then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm. Chris and William are getting ready for the day. Which of them doesn't live alone?
William is brushing his teeth, but there is one more toothbrush in the bathroom. It's likely to belong to someone else, so I'd say William doesn't live alone. Now, take a look at these pictures of Philip and Kai. One of them lives with his girlfriend. Can you tell who it is?